I know you already teach poetry. In fact, you probably did a bunch last month for National Poetry Month. So your students are primed and ready for testing out and enjoying poems for two voices. Yep, you heard that right. And it's not as scary or complicated as it sounds. Today, I have the skinny on engaging your students in a fun end of year activity, reading and writing poems for two voices. And guess what? You can use them to review and reinforce all subject areas. How cool is that? teacher success coach, veteran elementary teacher, and mom of five. And this is the Teach Joyfully podcast. Thanks for joining me today. Are you missing out? Team Hope Insiders get extra encouragement, tips and tricks, surprise freebies, and more. Become a Hope Insider today and get access to all kinds of freebies at www.hopeineducation.com forward slash vault. All right, let's get started. You're probably wondering, what are poems for two voices? Well, poems for two voices are poems written with two parts to them, each part meant for a different reader. So your students will read them with a partner. It's kind of like singing in the round with the two groups of singers, voices overlap, they sing separately, and then they overlap again. So as an example of this, my son is going to read a poem with me. This poem is called Grasshoppers. Saps rising. Grounds warming. Grasshoppers, Grasshoppers are hatching, hatching out. out. Autumn lay eggs. Splitting. Young stepping. Into spring. The effect is pretty cool, right? If you look at the poems on the page, they are written in two columns side by side, one column for each reader. When it's a reader's turn to speak, there are words on that line. And when they are silent, there is empty space on that line. When readers are to speak together, they both have words on their line in their column. They might be the same words or different words, but they are to be spoken together. So for example, reader one might have a column that has words on line one, a space on line two, a space on line three, and words on line four. And reader number two might have a space on line one, words on line two, words on line three, and words on line four. As you can see, the readers are alternating reading until they get to line four where they're reading together. Don't worry, I have a template and an example in the show notes for you. So you really can do this and your students can do this. If you have very young children, do it together. It is a lot of fun and even young children will enjoy this. If you're looking for great examples of this, I highly recommend Joyful Noise, Poems for Two Voices by Paul Fleischman. I'll link that and a couple of other resources in the show notes as well. In this particular resource, there's three poems that I particularly like for elementary students. Grasshoppers, The Moth's Serenade, and Fireflies. You heard a piece of Grasshoppers when my son and I read. Now, obviously, A Joyful Noise is all poems about insects. So your students might need a video or more information on any of the insects that you're reading poems about just to give them some more background knowledge. And that would enhance their ability to understand the poem. Now for the best part. These poems are perfect for parent gifts and review and practice of learning from the entire year. You can write a poem about anything. So try writing one about a history concept a phonics concept, or even a math concept. If you're looking for more inspiration, try Math Talk, Mathematical Ideas in Poems for Two Voices. I'll link that one in the show notes as well. I do not own this book, so that's a disclaimer on that one. I did send it to one of my teachers who is teaching math this year in fifth grade, and so far she is loving it. So when you're ready to teach Poems for Two Voices, talk about the topic and generate background knowledge read a bunch together, and then talk about them some more. What do you notice? How does the poem talk about the topic? Are there any repeated lines or refrains? What parts of speech are they using? Are they using sentences, phrases, or individual words? And poems for two voices use varying combinations of that. So it's a great time to talk about phrases, sentences, and parts of speech. Once you have all of this input, you're ready to brainstorm some topics of your own. Decide where you want to center your conversation. It could be on phonics. It could be on Mother's Day. It could be we're writing a poem for our dads. It can be anything that you want, but kind of figure out where you want to center the conversation so it doesn't go too crazy. Then from all those ideas, you're going to pick one topic 
and you start generating words and sentences and phrases and all the information that you know about that topic. After that, think about how you want it to sound. So you and your students need to start thinking about how you want this poem to sound. Are you going to mimic noises? Is there a cadence that you want in different parts of the poem? What's important to know about this topic? Maybe you're going to want to repeat that several times, or maybe you want to make it into a refrain that repeats a lot throughout the poem. What what words will go together that and what words will be said separately. So you're going to start building the poem and you're going to play around with this a lot. What I really like doing is writing the words and phrases on index cards and putting them on the floor and then starting to arrange them into two columns. So it can be especially helpful to have index cards and to create two columns on the floor. So you can use painter's mask to create two columns on the floor and then write each of the words, phrases, sentences on a separate index card, and then you can move them around and read them together and play with it. You could do the same thing on the board, but it would require that you had maybe magnetic tape on the back of each of your index cards, and then you can move things around a little more easily. Rather than erasing and rewriting, sometimes physically actually moving pieces is much easier for students. Once you've worked through this process, then you should have your poem together and you can begin reading it. As you read it, you obviously you can move things around and change things, but then once you've done, you can copy it onto chart paper and you have your poem for two voices already written for your whole class. How fun is that? If you want your class to start working on poems for two voices on their own, I have a template for that or you can take a line paper and fold it in half. I call it the hot dog way, the long way. And that creates two columns for students to be able to begin writing on. It is helpful if they generate ideas on a sheet of paper first and then cut them apart. And then they have all of their words and phrases and little pieces of paper and they can move them around on those two columns on that folded sheet of paper, which really is helpful and gives students the ability to kind of move things around. They can write some new things, add it to their mix and play with it. It's great for them to work with a partner. That is easiest way to do poems for two voices simply because then you have two people reading it and trying it out, moving things around. And it really does help because they can actually hear it and how it would sound with two voices. One of the big things about poems for two voices is you can't be afraid to erase and change things as you reread and try it out. You have to be willing to really move things around and change it up if it's not working because it is a little more complex with two different voices. But that's the fun part. It really is because you're trying things out. How does that sound? Do we like that? Let's try it this way. Nope, other way was better. Go back to the other way. It's easy to move things around and you can try it, have fun with it, play with it, speak it together. That's part of the fun of creating a poem for two voices. So have fun with it. If you're learning about bugs, do one for a bug. If you've learned about silent E, do one for that. Do one for mom, dad, a sibling. You can even do one about your class. All right, so here's your marching orders. Begin introducing poems for two voices. Once you've introduced them and you've really worked with some, you'll begin brainstorming. Then try some together about topics that you've learned. Try writing some for characters that you know in books, pets, moms, dads. And remember, there's a free template in the show notes. Don't forget to grab that. It will help you quite a bit. And when you're all done, Have a poetry reading. It can just be your class. It doesn't have to turn into some big event, but you can have some snacks and have a lot of fun enjoying each other's poems. And that's it. Give it a go. All the links to resources mentioned in this episode are in the show notes on my website at www.hopeineducation.com forward slash podcast. Don't forget you can grab all my freebies in the vault. As always, that link is in the show notes. So that's it for this episode of the Teach Joyfully podcast, my teacher friends. My sincere thanks to you, my listeners, for tuning in and for all those of you who have taken the time to post a review, email me your thoughts, or DM me on Instagram with your feedback and topic requests. You can find the show notes and all the resources mentioned in the episode on my website at www.hopeineducation.com forward slash podcast. 
And remember, a happy teacher is a good teacher. Until next time, teach joyfully and take care of you.